Okay, so we had finished the first two mantras of the Upanishads and we are in the third mantra. So let us chant that mantra. Sarvam Yetad Brahma. Sarvam Yetad Brahma. Ayamatma Brahma. Ayamatma Ayamatma Brahma. Soyamatma Chatushpat. Soyamatma Chatushpat. Jagartas Thano Bahif Pragnyaha Bahish Pragnyaha Jagrit Thano Bahish Pragnyaha Saptanga Eko Na Vimshati Mukhaha Saptanga Eko Na Vimshati Mukhaha Thula Bhug Vaishwana Raha Thula Bhug Vaishwana Raha Pratama Padaha Pratama Padaha Okay, so we have completed the second mantra and we are on the third mantra. In the second mantra, we had said that we had started an inquiry. And here, now we are on the second leg of the inquiry. And look at the last two words, Pratama Padaha the first aspect of Brahman. Because we said Brahman has four padaha, four aspects. Padaha literally means quarters, but we cannot apply, you know, Brahman has no parts, so we cannot say parts, so we say aspect. And what is that? This is the first pada. The first pada is Brahman when associated with the waker's world, right? So it's called Thula Atma. The, men, the name is not mentioned in the mantra because uh, though it, it actually is the name of the Brahman, the consciousness principle, but not independent, unaffected by the avasthas. It is the consciousness principle as seen when associated with the Jagrat Avastha, the waking Avastha. And therefore Upanishad says, Jagrata Sthanaha. Jagrata Sthanaha means this is the name given to the Atma associated with the waking world. And what was that called in uh, the Tattva Bodha? The idea has already been seen in Tattva Bodha. Consciousness associated with the waker Vishwa. and the waking world. Yes. Vishwa. Consciousness associated with the waker is Vishwa. Hmm. Consciousness associated with the waking world is what? Virat. 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 Aprapancha. Prathama Padaha consists of both these principles. So we should understand here that this first word, Jagratha Sthanaha, it is not the name of the avastha. We are not talking about Jagrat avastha. It's a name given to the consciousness principle, to Brahman, to Atman, which obtains in the Jagrat avastha, which was called Vishwa and just called Virat. Right. Therefore, I, the pure consciousness principle, am associated with the waking world and the waker. And therefore, I appear in twofold ways. As the knower, as the waking knower, the Jagrat Pramata, when I am associated with the three body, individual bodies, I am the knower, Jagrat Pramata. And when I am associated with the Jagrat Avastha, the world, the universe, I am the Prameyam, 
what is known. So I, the consciousness principle, I appear in two ways. One as the knower and one as the known. So this is what is being said here. When am I called the knower and when am I called the known? In other words, when do I get the title of Pramata and when do I get the title of Prameyam? When I, Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, I am associated with Vyashti Sthula Nama Rupa. That is the individual bodies at the individual level. That In that association, with the asso Brahman or Atma, which I am, when I am associated, associated with the individual bodies, I am called the Pramata. So Vyashti Sthula Nama Rupa association is Pramata. And when I, consciousness principle, when I, Brahman, I, Atma, I am associated with the Samashti Sthula Nama Rupa, the macro Nama Rupa, macro names and forms, which is the world itself, then I am called the Prapancha. I am called Prameya Prapancha, the, no, the knowable universe or the known universe. And therefore, from the point of view of the individual, I am the knower. From the point of view of Veshti, I am the knower. From the point of view of Samashti, I am the known, the universe itself. Therefore, I, Brahman, when I take on the micro Nama Rupa at the individual level, I am Pramata, the knower. When I put on the macro Nama Rupa at the Samashti level, at the universal level, I am known as the world. And therefore, this Upanishad gives the description of both Pramata I, the knower I, as well as Prameyam I, the known I. Right? So first, he talks about the knower I. So, Bahish Pragnyaha. Bahihi Pragnyaha. Bahihi means outwards. Pragnyaha is the consciousness. So, consciousness turned outwards. In other words, in Jagradavastha, when I am associated with the individual mind and the body, my consciousness turned where? Towards the world. And therefore, I become a waker. And this consciousness is turned outward how? Using the Pancha Jnanendriyas and the Pancha Karmendriyas. Therefore, as Jagrat Pramata, I am extroverted. My consciousness is outwards and therefore he calls it Bahish Pragnyaha. Outward oriented consciousness. Going outward how? Through the Vyashti Nama Rupa, through the individual mind and body. Right? So this is the first part. And how do I, the individual mind, contact the outside world? So he says, Eko na Vimshati Mukaha. Right? So, Eko na Vimshati simply means 19. Okay. Eko na Vimshati is 19. Mukaha is the face or the organs. And therefore, this I, who am associated with the individual body-mind complex, I interact with the world using the 19 organs. Which you all know. What are those 19 organs? Care of Tattva Bodha. Pancha Jnanendriya, Pancha Karmendriya, Pancha Prana and the four Antakarma. The four aspects of the Antakarma. Right? So that 5 plus 5 plus 4. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 4. 19 gates, 19 organs are there. With these 19 organs, Jagrat Ramata interacts with the external world, extra extroverted consciousness. And when he interacts with the external world, what happens? Sthula book. So that third last word, you have to break it into Sthula book. Vaishvanaraha. So Sthula book. Book is Bhokta, the experiencer. So he is describing the second aspect of the Pramata. Pramata is the knower as well as the experiencer. And Thula Bhuk means the one who experiences Thula Prapancha, the external Prapancha he experiences. And therefore he is called Thula Bhuk. Right? 
and all put together by Ishpragnya, Ekona Vimshati Mukha, Thula Bhuk. These three things put together, we call in Tattva Bodha Vishwa. Okay, Vishwa is not given in the mantra, but we have to bring it forward from our Tattva Bodha studies. So that is Vishwa. Then, up to this is the is the is the description of the Vishwa, the individual, the Pramata, the knower, the individual knower, right? So these three descriptions, Bahihi Pragnyaha, Eko Navamshati, Eko Navamshati Mukaha, and Sthula Bhuk. These are all from the vision of the individual, from the Vyashti Drishti. From Vyashti Drishti, these three are the descriptions of the knower. Now, what else is there we said? We said we are the known also. When you identify with the individual body mind, so it's complex, you are the knower. But I myself also identify with the world. And there in that, I am the known, right? Okay, the Samashti angle. So the well, Vashti angle is now over. As Vashti, I am the Pramata, the knower. Then I identify with the whole universe. And in that, I am the the world itself. So Samashti, I am the world itself. So Samashti Drishti is being given here. Two words are used. Saptangaha and Vaishvanaraha. Right? Saptangaha is seven aspects. Vaishvanaraha is of course Ishvara. Now this is taken from an Upanishad called Chandogya Upanishad. This reference of Saptangaha is from an Upanishad called Chandogya Upanishad which we have not yet done, right? So there, there is a, uh, what you call, Upasana of, Ish, of Ishwara, right? Vaishwana, of Saptanga Ishwara, the Lord with seven different cosmic limbs. And in that, while doing the Upasana, the description is given in the Upanishad, there are seven limbs of this Saptanga Ishwara, this Virat, right? We are talking about Samashti Ishwara, the universe, gross universe, and therefore Virat. And this Virat has been given as seven different limbs are there. The first is the is heaven. And heaven is said to be Swarga. Swarga is said to be the head of Virat. Then the eye. The sun is said to be the eye of Virat. Then the Samashti Vayuhu. The Vayu at the Samashti level is the breathing for Virat. Then the Agni Tatvam is the mouth of Virat. Then the whole body of Virat is Akasha, total space. The oceans are said to be the bladder of Virat. Samudraha is the bladder and the feet is said to be earth or Prithvi. So seven limbs are visualized while doing the Upasana. Head is heaven, sun is the eye. Breathing of Virat is Samashti Vayuhu. The mouth of Virat is Agni Tatvam. And you will recognize this from... 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where we saw that the mouth was very terrible and full of fire. The body is Akasha, the bladder is the ocean, and the feet are Prithvi. Because of the seven limbs, this Virat is called Saptangaha. And that Saptangaha Ishwara, Vaishwanaraha, I, I am also that Ishwara also. Okay, in Chandogya Upanishad, it is a Upasana. But in Manduka Upanishad, I am saying that I am that same Ishwara, I am that same Virat when I identify with the Samashti. Therefore, in the waking state, I become the Pramata, the individual. I also become the universe. These two, this is the meaning of this particular mantra. And this is called Prathama Padaha. Prathama Padaha is the first aspect. Is Vishwa and Virat put together is the first aspect of Brahman. And we can say, call this Thula Atma. Thula Atma is Atma associated with the Thula Prapancha and the Thula Nama Rupa individual also. Right. So this is a mantra which is quoted by Shankara in his commentary. And it's, it's basically part of an upasana called Vaishwana Vidya. So in, in uh, Chandogya Upanishad, Upanishad the term Vidya is used for Upasana. So this Vaishvanara Vidya, which means Vaishvanara Upasana. That is the that is the background. 
and the same description it gives the same mantra but whatever we have done but whatever i have told you those seven aspects are quoted and only thing is that he uses the term ahavaniya agni ahavaniya agni do you remember what it is we have discussed some time ago in one of the upanishads what is ahavaniya agni it is said to be the mouth when you say agni is the mouth shankara says it is ahavaniya agni why does he say ahavaniya agni and not just plain old agni ahavaniya agni is associated with what vedic rituals vedic rituals are called agnihotram right agni and therefore okay. whenever a vaishvanara i mean whenever a virat upasaka vaishvanara upasaka eats food he has to visualize that eating as agnihotra karma and that is the connection the fire used for agnihotram is called ahavani agni and therefore shankara says ahavani agni is the mouth it's just at the at the vyashti level when you eat you have to do the upasana and when you eat the food it is as if virat is eating the food okay so that is the discussion on the prathama pada now one question can be asked over here which shankara asks in his bhashya he says this consciousness associated with the gross universe why should it be taken as first prathama pada because the gross universe is not the first to form right the gross universe is the last to form the third to form what is the sequence of formation antaryami hiranyagarbha and virat so virat is the last to form why should you call virat as prathama pada ha shankara asks can you think of a reason because that's the thing visible to us we perceive it first then only we can analyze going into deeper understanding well, you could take it as that but we have to think in is terms it, of the journey is it uh, because uh, after the gross the subtle will be to uh, talked about and then the causal and f- then the pure brahman will be spoken about which i am see if you look at your journey sorry yeah ringo boliye uh no so the point is the journey begins with the jagrata and back to the laya state and the destruction is uh, backwards that way so when you are doing the spiritual journey what are you doing you are resolving the gross into the subtle you are resolving the karyam the product into the karanam what is the karanam for virat ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ರೈಟ್ now we are all advanced students so we say jagan mithya brahma satyam so shankara points out jagan mithya is fine you have to negate anatma it is fine because in all the discussions that you are doing or all your all your uh, spiritual sadhana all the gnanam which you are going through what are you doing you are negating the the earth the the anatma as mithya but shankara says negating anatma is only the first step right but after negating one has to bring it back you first negate anatma then you have to bring anatma back but bring it back as mithya can you understand the reason reasoning is what is the reasoning for this what he is saying is mere nirguna ishwara appreciation is not enough you have to bring back saguna ishwara also saguna ishwara you are 
discounting, you are negating as mithya. But he says, after discounting, after dismissing Saguna Ishwara as mithya, you have to bring back Saguna Ishwara. Why is that? You, first of all, the starting point is that I take Saguna Ishwara as, as Satyam, right? I take the world as Satyam. And, and uh, Vedanta tells me that is not true. You have to negate because it is Mithya. So you have negated the world. World means nothing but Virat, Saguna Ishwara. After having negated Saguna Ishwara, Shankara says you have to bring it back. Why so? Bring it back, but bring it back as Mithya. You have negated the Satyam part of it. It is considered mithya and you have to bring that mithya back. What is the reason? Because we live in Bivarik world. So Bivarika has to be... I mean, okay, can... that's, a, that's a reasonable uh, assumption. But remember that if you negate and keep it aside, what are you doing? You are saying there is... We something... have to make it Advaitam. When we make it exactly. Satyam so and Mithya, then I aside, When you negate it with aside, you are saying there is Satyam and there is Mithya. You right. so are accepting duality. Therefore, real Advaitam can be there only when we accept the duality, but as a dependent entity, not different from me, the Satyam. I am Brahman and the whole universe is there in me but not different from me, dependent upon me. Therefore, that you have to do. And once you do that, then only is your vision complete. It's a very subtle point, which a lot of people miss. That negating is not enough. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. So that is why Brahma Satyam comes first. Brahma Satyam is overriding. Jagan Mithya, yes. But Jagan Mithya is part of Brahma Satyam. You can never, never do away with it. You have to bring it back as Mithya itself, as non different from Brahman. So, Jagan Mithya means Jagan is there, but not different from Brahman. And therefore, when I meditate, when I do my Nididhyasanam, remember the most common mistake that everybody makes, even advanced Vedic students, is they meditate upon yourself, upon himself, as Prathama Pada Vishwa. That is not correct. You are, you are Patramapada Vishwa, the knower. You are also Vaishwanara, Virat. Right? So, Pramata and Pramayam both have to come into your meditation. You should remember that Vishwa and Virat are both included here. Now, why do we say that? Because supposing you are doing, you know, Vidhyasanam on Vishwa. Right? And you are considering it only Vishwa. What are you negating? You are negating the individual bodies. What will you do? You will resolve the individual gross body into the individual subtle body. You will dissolve the individual subtle body into individual causal body, Karana Shariram. And finally, you will resolve Karana Shariram into what? Into Turiyam, into Brahman. But because you are resolving your own bodies, this Brahman will be a personal Brahman for you. It will be only I the Brahman. And then June is another Brahman. And Payal is another Brahman. And Aruna is another Brahman. So, it is not sufficient to resolve your Vyashti Sharirams, your individual Sharirams, it is not sufficient. You have to resolve the universe also. Right? Because if you do only the individual Sharirams, remember each Jiva who does this will have a personal Turiyam. Therefore, then multiple Atmas would come. And we don't accept multiple Atmas. And therefore, you have to equate Vishwa with Virat. You have to say that Vishwa and Virat are the same. The consciousness pervading Vishwa is the same as the consciousness pervading Virat and therefore just like I resolve my own three bodies, I have to resolve the universal three bodies also. I have to resolve Virat into Hiranyagarbha, Hiranyagarbha into Antaryami, Antaryami into Turiyam Brahman. That is, that way only I can ensure 
total advaita and shankara says therefore the prapanchas also have to be resolved without resolution of prapanchas your journey will not be complete you will be individual atma every else everybody else will be individual atma okay any questions Pumacharaji. Yeah. Is this is not a question regarded to the discussion we just have, but um about the the meaning of the verse in terms of the translation. Can you give us a, a translation complete, not by words? Okay, I would like somebody else to, to attempt that. <clears throat> Can you give a full translation of this third mantra? Somebody wants to attempt that? Who would like to attempt that? Arunaji, would you like to? Okay, nobody wants to attempt. So then. Okay, no, no, I was uh, on mute, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. So Jagrita Sthanaha means the. Um, in the waking state, the waking world that we are experiencing, Bahish Pragnya is um, uh, through the external, our through the sense organs, our uh, external perception of the external world. And I'm just going word by word, you know, not like the yeah, verse okay. you explained, as okay. because he said word by word. Saptangaha is the seven limbs, and. Um, Ekona Vimshati Mukaha is the 19 mouths. Okay. So as explained that five Gyanendriyas, five Karmendriyas, panj Pranas and four Antakarna. So these 19, through these 19, we experience the seven limbs. That means uh, the six at the Vyashti level and six at the Samashti level. The external world um, at the Sthula, Sukshma and Karana level uh, the macrocosm and the ma microcosm. And uh, stool, stool book Vaishvanara Prathama Padaha. So stool book means enjoying the uh, gross objects of the outer world, the external world. And um, so this is at the um, Vyashti level, it is called Vaishvanara. That is the first aspect, Prathama aspect of the Stool Atma as described. Okay. It's all mixed up. So, you know, the the Sanskrit is pretty sort of uh, mixed up in all these. So I'll try to break it up for you. You look at Prathama Pada, the last two words. And then you have to break up that Sthula Bhuk Vaishvanaraha into Sthula Bhuk plus Vaishvanaraha. So you put Prathama Pada Vaishvanaraha. The first quarter, the first pada, the first aspect of Brahman is Vaishvanaraha. Jagratasthanaha, which who is called Jagratasthanaha. You have to also interpret it, who is a consciousness associated with the waking state. And this at the Samashti level, Saptangaha is the Saptanga Ishvara, Saptanga Virat. And at the Vyashti level, he is Ekona Vimshati Mukaha, Stola Mukaha. The 19 organs plus he is the experience or experiencer also. So you will not have a very satisfactory running meaning. The thing with you know Sanskrit is that you are supposed to put in a lot of things. Yes. So it doesn't make too much sense to ask for running meanings of verses. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have said from if you want a running meaning, you have to extract from there and create the running meaning for yourself. Thank you, Acharya. Okay. Right. Anybody else? And what were the seven limbs of of the external world? Uh, it's there. It's in Chandogya Upanishad. I give you the list. Yeah. Right? So head, you know, head is head, head you know, mouth and all that is there. You want to ah, yes, yes. The sky and the yes. Yeah. So remember. just go through the yeah. recording and you'll be able to know that. Yes, thank you. Fine. Now let us look at mantra number four. So we will read. Swapnasthano antapragnyaha. 
सप्तांग एको न विंशति मुख सप्तांग एको न विंशति मुख प्रविविक्त भुक्त जसो अवस्था So consciousness associated with the jagrat avastha is called jagrat sthana, and similarly, consciousness associated with the dream state, the swapna avastha, is called swapna sthana. It is the name of the consciousness, right? And that consciousness is associated as before with two parts: the sukshma nama rupa individual. and the sukshma nama rupa world okay they are all mental projections only remember the dream objects the dream time the dream space everything is a mental projection only not available to your sense organs and therefore it is sukshma so this is called just like the previous in the previous case we gave the name sthula atma here you can give the name sukshma atma and when i am associated with in the dream state with the dream world and the dream knower what do i do just like in the jagrat avastha i am the knower and the known in the swapna avastha also i am the knower and the known so i am the swapna pramata the dream knower and i am the swapna prameyam the swapna prapancha the dream world by associating with swapna pramata is what vyasthi nama rupa the dream body dream body dream mind i am the swapna pramata at the individual level vyasthi nama rupa swapna vyasthi nama rupa association makes me swapna pramata samashthi nama rupa association <coughs> associating myself with the dream world i become the swapna prapancha so two aspects are there swapna pramata the dream knower swapna prapancha the dream world both i become swapna pramata was given a name in apaboda which is repeated here taijasaha is yes, taijasa is given here swapna pramata i have a name taijasaha as swapna prameyam what is my name hiranya garba yeah. hiranya garba right so all this we already know we just repeating okay so therefore my dvitiya padaha is called swapna sthana and what is its nature in the last mantra we saw bahish pragnya bahihi pragnya consciousness turned outwards you are here seeing what antah pragnya consciousness turned inwards and therefore you are not using your 19 cross sense organs right the gross sense organs you are not using the waking sense organs you are not using you have turned inwards so from the standpoint of view of the waker the waker's body the consciousness is not using the 19 sense organs but is turned inwards and therefore anta pragnya he is having internal experience only his mind is turned inwards because all the sense or 19 sense organs jnana indriyas karma indriyas are closed what have i done i have projected an internal world out of my own mind and here shankara explains in this particular bhashyam some shankara explains how dream is formed so we have seen this before in many discussions the explanation is drawn from shankara bhashyam of this of this particular upanishad so shankara says that in jagrat avastha your mind records everything so we of course 
give a enhanced description thing it's not only a video recorder it records all the smells also so video audio and smell everything it records in jagradavastha and it keeps it as samskaras impressions and in the swapna avastha in the dream state these impressions these samskaras are activated what is the reason for the activation prarabdha karma alone in the swapna avastha remember there is no fresh recording why because your mind is not available your waking mind is not available the waking sense organs are not available the external world is not available to you therefore whatever world you are seeing in swapna it is a playback only there is no recording at all shankara of course makes one more very very important very very subtle point he says in jagrat avastha now this you have to understand this very carefully in jagrat avastha the sense organs they carry the reflected consciousness why does he make this statement in jagrat in the waking state sense organs carry the idavasa the reflected consciousness why do we say that remember we explained the process of knowing mm-hmm. what is the process of knowing the thought flows out idam vritti adam idam vritti and aham vritti right so the thought flows out in the form and envelops the object that is inert but that inert thought is pervaded by aham vritti which is consciousness which is the rc therefore in jagrat avastha he says the chidavasa pervades the vritti and that vritti which has contacted the object when the chidavasa pervades that vritti the object is revealed but he says in dream one does not require the dream sense organs to carry chidavasa why so you have to do a lot of thinking in dreams your dream sense objects need not carry reflected consciousness because it's only a mental projection not the external world that you are seeing okay the dream explain that further no what the what the dream eyes are seeing is the dream world projected by the mind so the sense organs directly are not involved okay i mean it, it, it you but are you not do, experiencing you do have, the external you world do have dream sense thing. organs right uh, dream Can sense organs yeah. the dream waker will have dream eyes that is how he sees the dream dream tiger but he is not using the waker's eyes correct okay. okay you come very close to it but what he says is that go back to the source what is the source projecting this dream waker the waking uh, the waking experiences mind. of the waking time the no, waker the waker's mind, mind projects the mind, yes. mind mind yes waker does the waker's mind have rc or not Yes. Because yes. Because the waker's mind has got yes. RC. Karanam, remember, Aryam, the product, is exactly the same as the Karanam, and the dream mind is a projection of the waker's mind. The waker's mm-hmm. mind already has got Chidabasa, RC, and therefore everything mm-hmm. in the dream world, in the dream, everything in the dream, including the dream individual and the dream universe. they are already pervading the chidabasa rc is already there and so he says very important clear unlike in jagrat avastha where the inert objects have to be revealed by the vritti carrying a chidabasa because the dream mind the dream universe have been projected by the waker's mind already having rc every object in your dream already has rc and when something already has rc it is self revealing so right. the universe is in the dream universe everything is self revealing 
and therefore you do not need the help of the sense organs at all. I hope you understand. A very, very mm -hmm. important point, useful to understanding how dreams function. Any questions? So here also the 19 mukhas are mentioned and um, the seven yes. limbs. 19 so, dream organs are there. Right? But the dream organs do not require Chidamasa specifically because they are projected by the waker's mind which already has got Chidamasa. What he is saying is that just as no. the dream sense organs have already got Chidamasa, this idea to be understood is the dream sense objects also have got Chidamasa. The difference between the waking world and the dream world is that in the waking world, mind has got chidabhasa, objects do not have got do not have chidabhasa. But mm -hmm. in the dream world, both have got chidabhasa. Objects both. are also self-revealing. Mm -hmm. You don't need the sense organs at all. Understood. That's why he said that anta pragna inwards. Pragna, yes. Moving inwards. From that, mm -hmm. moving inwards is from the point of view of the waker only. Right? Yeah. So, for example, if you want to take a pot, the in the waking state, Jagradavastha, the pot thought is generated mm -hmm. by the presence of the object pot. But in Swapna Avastha, the object pot is not there. Only pot thought is there. That is the idea. In Swapna Avastha, mm -hmm. Only the vritti is there. There is no corresponding object there. Obviously, right? If you have a, if yeah. you are looking at, an, at a Boeing airplane in your uh, mind, in your uh, dream, only the thought can be there. The object is not there in your mind. It's mm -hmm. too big for fit into your mind, right? So that's the idea being explained over here. So Shankara says they are all self-evident only. Everything in the dream world is self-evident. And of course, Ekona Vimshati Mokaha, there are 19 organs of interaction. And therefore, the dream jiva identifies with dream, sun, dream, wife, dream, daughter, everything. Right? Mano, buddhi, chitta, hankara, everything is projected. And through these dream organs, the dream sense objects are experienced. Tavivikta Bhuktaha. To be remembered is that the dream sense organs are not composed of panchabhutas. What is the composition of dream sense organs? They are made out of my own vasanas. Right? The dream sense organ, there is no such thing as a dream panchabhuta. The dream sense organs have been projected from my own vasana, from my own thoughts. And therefore, this waking mind of mine has divided itself into the dream experiencer, the dream experience, in the dream experienced. Okay. So, praviviktaha here means subtle. Sukshmaha. That's why he says pravivikta bhuktaha. The dream organs or the dream experiences are sukshma. They are very subtle. Therefore, I am the experience experiencer of the dream world and I am the pramata also in the dream world. So, I am also I am also the experiencer of the dream experiences. Right? So you have to remember that the Vishwas experience is very close to the dreamer's experience because also, also in the form of thoughts only. The only difference is that Vishwas thoughts are generated by external objects, but Tajaza's thoughts do not have an object associated with it. This important idea is being conveyed. That Vishwas thoughts in the waking state, your thoughts have always an association with an object outside you. While as Taijasa, your thoughts do not have any external association at all. For you, as, Vish as Taijasa, as a dreamer, the experiences, what you call experiences, are merely vrittis, are merely thoughts. What is the basis? Vasana only. There is no object at all. That is why Pravivikthaha. Subtle only. Objects are not there. Right? And then Saptangaha. Is the very same eye 
I'm appearing as the entire Swapna Prapancha. You have to get back to those seven uh, parts. And therefore, in when I associate myself with the Vyashthi, I am Tejasa. And associate myself with Samashthi in dream, I am Hiranyagarbaha. So, in this mantra, of course, only Tejasa is given. We have to supply Hiranyagarbaha. <clears throat> One point here is that when I say that dreamer experiences the inner world, remember it is from the waker standpoint. For the dream jiva, the world is external or internal? External only. For the dream jiva, world is always external. But since we are analyzing from which, which jiva standpoint, from the waker standpoint, therefore we say antapragnaha, the dreamer experiences the inner world. That experience is always from the waker standpoint, never from the dreamer standpoint. Okay, any question? Because we will stop here since we don't have time to complete the next mantra. I don't want to carry over half a mantra. So, any questions? I'll, I'll answer. Yeah. Oh, sir. Yes, please. Go ahead. Go yes. ahead. Yeah. So, the way you explained it, we can say dreams are completely predetermined because there is no experiencing which is actually happening it's if it's really based on past vrittis so even if i see a dream tiger and uh, the dreamer experiences a fear everything is all that is predetermined yes you don't have free will in the dream a dream jiva is devoid of free will right om sir uh, that's what i wanted to say then the bizarreness of the dream is my prarabdha yes the dream because, experiences are triggered by a prarabdha. Right. That's what makes them bizarre and totally not unrelated. Bizarre. See, whatever you ah. see in the dream, you have already experienced. You don't experience yes, anything new at all. Ah, you might experience okay. picture. You know, like you might have seen a man okay. and you might have seen a lion. And you right. might, your dream might put them together and put the man with the head of a lion. So you would not actually mm. have seen a man with the head of a lion. So that mixture and match is possible. Hmm. And I don't understand that statement of um, uh, the dream vritti is um, self-evident. In the sense, there is no aham vritti, you are saying? See, the yes. dreamer, the dream, the waker's mind already has aham vritti in it. So, when the waker's mind projects the dreamer, there is that dream, the dreamer jiva, Dreamer Jiva's mind, your dream mind, already has Ahamati. Right? But <clears throat> what I am saying is that dream object also has. You see a tiger, there is no real tiger. There is no object tiger in the dream. The tiger is only a thought. The thought is in the dreamer's mind, which has already got RC. Therefore, the dream object also got RC. Since the dream object is being projected by the dreamer's mind, which already has RC, the dream object also has RC. That is the main difference in this explanation. In the external world, the RC, the object is not pro, not projected by you, and it is inert. So Acharya, we say, yeah. Okay, so Acharya, we say that there is no idamriti in that case. Idamriti is definitely there. Idamriti means I thought consciousness. Okay. RC. Okay. RC mm -hmm. is there throughout. Okay. What I am saying is that. The object, object is thought the, is not there. Object thought is not. The object thought is there. If you have got tiger thought in the dream, tiger thought is there, but the tiger object is not there. The tiger object would be have been something else. Forget about tiger. Let us take a glass. The glass object would not have been there. It's oh, not. Acharya. Yeah. But when you are saying that the glass object or the tiger object is not there, but for the dreamer, it exists as an external object. Correct. Correct. If I we are speaking that. from this point of view, I need to understand this no, is only from talking, a waker perspective the analysis, that the graph can be... The analysis can only be from the waker standpoint. Ah, yes. Okay. From the waker standpoint, there is no object inside. 
therefore the main difference remember is dream experience consists only of thoughts waking experience consists of thoughts generated by outside objects that is what is being said the thoughts in the dream are not generated by outside objects they are generated by our vasanas I hope this distinction is very clear. Okay, this is a crucial part of understanding. Okay. No? Very uncomfortable silence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Jun. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jun. So in dream state, we see the experience of the subtle world. That means in the form of thoughts. That yes. that's what the, is meant by subtle world. Yes. Like you said, subtle elements. Yes, there is no object outside. No object outside. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The idea is that all see, all experiences are thoughts. What is being conveyed broadly. All experiences are thoughts, whether it be in the Jagrata Vastha or in Swapna Vastha. An experience is nothing but a thought. Thought, the yes. difference yes. is in Jagrata Vastha, experiences, the thought is generated by external object. In Swapna Vastha, thought is generated by your recorded experiences. There is no external object. In the mind only, the thought is there. And Prarabdha activates those vasanas and generates the thought. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Right, got it. Okay, so with this we'll stop. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashushyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you for your Thank you. I urge you all to, you know, go over the recordings, take notes. Because Bandukya, if you are not Consistently up to date, you'll find that right. you'll be floating. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Acharya. Yes. Thank you. No.